stay at three, so I'll stay at three. Psalm 34, excuse me. Psalm 34, starting at verse 1. It reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of the Lord and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just tell you thank you, God. Thank you. And we exalt the name. We give you praise and give you honor, God, for who you are in our life. Lord, we ask now that the blessings that we go for the next service, that we give you praise and we give you honor, and we just lift you up that you will be in our midst. And Father, we thank you, Father, for giving us another chance to come into your presence. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
God and put it in the out offering out to the out of church. Amen. And we thank you for coming to visit with us. Amen. 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 Praise.
and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit who cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Now Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold up peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame, Jesus' fame, spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching only. Pray now, God, that you would help me to decrease, that your divine presence increase. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, and you are my strength and my redeemer. Anoint each of us the Lord, that we might hear, that we might believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we should be all of the honor. All of the glory and all of the praise. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Every heart say, Amen. 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 He, he, oh.
want to speak from these words. Show up and speak out. Show up and speak out. Real quiet. My brothers and my sisters, we must understand, we must grasp the fact that as Christians, as children of God, as being saved and sanctified and going to heaven anyhow, that we have a responsibility. We have a duty to make sure that we show up and speak out. Uh -huh. There is someone that's in the valley of their lives. There are someone in the wilderness that need for you and I to show up and speak out. It's amazing with all the other organizations and all the other persons or people who are coming out of the closet, the church is going into the closet. We have become silent. We have hushed. We have shut our voices up. But the mandate from the master and the message from the master, y'all do know him, yeah. is still the same. Now today, we're going to talk from this sub-theme of the methods of the master. We're talking about the message, we're talking about the mandate. Now we're going to talk about the methods because the methods changes. Mm -hmm. The message doesn't change. The mandate doesn't change. Although sometimes we change it yeah. to fit us. Mm -hmm. But the methods that we use to carry out the mandate and to relate the message change. So today we're going to talk about this attack, this message, show up and speak out. We must understand, my brothers and my sisters, that not only did our master give us a mandate and a message for soul winning, he also gave us some methods. If you want to learn from if you want to learn how to do something, you should study the person who does best what you want to do. If you want to be a better business person, you try to learn from someone who is good in business. If you want to be a football player, you try to learn from those who are playing football. And, and in this society, we have we have high schoolers and, 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 and middle schoolers going to camps and going to different places to learn how to be better as a football player or as a cheerleader or as a soccer player or as a baseball player or as a singer, or as an entertainer, as a dancer. We want to get around those who know best what we want to do. But guess what? Nobody evangelized and won more souls to the kingdom than Jesus the Christ. Amen. And if we want to know how to do what he has called us to do, we must learn to listen and obey what he says. I just believe, I just believe that if we try our best to do what Jesus did, we will get the results that Jesus got. All right. Are y'all hearing me? Now, don't start saying stuff like this. Mm -hmm. How can I do those things? Jesus was man and God. But aren't you forgetting something? Aren't you forgetting as Christians? Aren't you forgetting something very important? St. John chapter 14, verse 12 and 13 says, Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. 
and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to my Father, and whosoever, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now Jesus said that, and I don't know about you, but I just believe what Jesus said. I believe that, that, that what he says is true. So my brothers and my sisters, it is not us. We got to remember this. It is not us. It is because of the God in us All right. who will work out of us for the good of others. All right. Jesus the Christ in his three year ministry showed us what to do, when to go, after we get there, or we got there. I said that again. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, in his three-year ministry, he showed us when to go and what to do after we get there. The mandate of the master of the master did not miss anybody. And he included everybody. All right. He witnessed to the rich, to the poor, to the outcast. He even witnessed to his enemies. All right. So, what did that mean for us? That means God wants us to witness to anybody and everybody. In right. his witnessing, in Jesus' went everywhere and anywhere. He went into boats, he went on mountaintops, he went in the wilderness, he went everywhere. What was Jesus trying to relate to us? What was he trying to tell us? Well, the master was trying to tell us that there are lost souls no matter where you go. Amen. Are y'all here? The question now is, <coughs> how do we witness? You know, that's a question that a lot of children, a lot of Christians ask, a lot of children of God ask, a lot of the church ask. Mm -hmm. They ask that question, which they should know the answer. They ask that question, how do we witness? Well, good question, guys ask. Again, I must say, we witness by looking to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Jesus has told us what to do. Now, it's up to us to do it. He's not going to twist your arm. He's not going to beat you over the head. He's not going to force you to do it. He's just telling you what to do and leave the choices up to us. Amen. Listen, Kevin. Jesus' most effective tool was that he demonstrated and showed he demonstrated and showed the power of God. Hmm. I believe that in the 21st century May 7, 2021 the church has lost its power. All right. When I talk about the church, I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about you and me. Those of us who profess and proclaim that we are a child of God, we are children of God, we are the church, we are the ecclesia, we are the call out one. We have really lost our power. But Jesus gave us the example. He demonstrated and showed the power of God in his life. I believe that, that, that if we had the power of God in our life, there won't be so much mass shooting. Right. There won't be so much evil in the world. But we have walked away from the presence and the power of God. Right. In other words, Jesus always mixed his preaching with his power. He spoke out but he also showed up. Mm -hmm. That's why I tag this message today. Show up 
and speak out. My brothers and my sisters, when John the Baptist on his journey, he was a forerunner for Christ and he was crying in the wilderness. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Say, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John was crying out in the wilderness. But in the 21st century, there is a wilderness crying out for God. All right. And we got to make sure that our voices are being heard because there's someone that we know who needs us. He spoke out. He showed up. It's in the text. Now let's go down. Mark chapter 1. Let's go down to verse 33. And all the city was gathered at the door. And he healed. Who did? Jesus healed many that were sick of divers diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed him or followed after him. And when they had followed him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. And he said unto them, let us go into the next town, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out. So you see, Jesus showed up and he spoke out. He is our example. The president is not our example. The governor is not our example. The Congress is not our example. Our example, the, 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 the high and mighty is not our example. The entertainers, the sports stars are not our example. Well, so then why do we cater more to the sports stars and the entertainers than we do to Christ? Right. It is strange to me that, 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 that we will spend time, talent, and money to follow somebody who's going to make millions and you're not going to make anything. Right. But we will follow a Christ who died for us and set our spirit free right. and who gave us eternal life. Amen. Something wrong with that picture. But then we call ourselves Christians. We carry his name. What we must see, my brothers and sisters, is that we must mix our words with our works. We must mix our walk with our talk. Jesus talked about the power. He talked about the power of God, but he also showed them mm -hmm. the power right. of God. Now, I hear your voice. I hear some of you are still saying, well, that was Jesus. Never ever forget a simple but profound statement. That is, God's word is God's word. Amen. If God said it, that sells it. It's up to you to believe it. If God said it, I believe that His word is true. Jesus said, "Before a tip." Of my word pass away, heaven and earth will pass away. Mark 16, 15, 20 lets us know. Let us know what? Let us know he promised this power to his people. Jesus operated with power. And we who are carrying his name, we who are Christians, should operate under or with the same. Power. You talking about that? That we have the same power that raised Jesus from, from the dead? Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. We've seen this. We've talked about this since we've been in this series of messages. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every Christian, every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
But he that believeth not shall be damned, but shall be condemned. And these signs, here it is, shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Mm -hmm. We got some folks that we know was possessed with some devils. Mm -hmm. And we're taking them to the doctor. <laughs> instead of taking them to Jesus. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly poison shall not, shall not, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Sometimes, baby, if you have to lay your hands on yourself, Amen. if you're a believer and you trust God, lay your hands on you. Who knows more about what's going on in your life other than you? Not even the doctor know, because you go to the doctor, he's going to ask you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but you know what's wrong with you. Lay your hands on yourself. So then, verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. You see that? And they went forth and preached wherever Everywhere. the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So, a lot of the times, we want the blessing, but we don't want to do it. Elder mentioned that this morning in Christian Weekend We want the blessing, but we don't want to do nothing he said. We want everything from him, but we don't want to do anything that he tells us to do. Now, what we see here is that signs always follow the word of God. Mm -hmm. He said it doesn't follow what you say. But signs and wonders follow the word of God. Once you get in the word, expect God's power to get in you. Right. My brothers and my sisters, your greatest witness, watch this now, your greatest witness about God's greatest power is what he did for you. Amen. You can't be a witness of what he did for somebody else, not, not the greatest. The greatest will is to really understand God's power and to tell you about God's power is what God has done for you. Amen. You must understand that nobody can tell your story better than you. Think about it. Who can tell a drunk about God's power better than an ex-drunk? Who can tell a wife abuser about God's forgiveness better than a wife abuser? A dope addict about deliverance better than a former dope addict? A liar about God's truth than a former liar. A pimp about God's love than a former or ex pimp. A gambler about God's blessing than an ex gambler. A gospel about God's message than an ex gospel. Who can do that better than someone who has experience? Up and down of life. You see, the problem with our witness is we are too busy trying to tell the unsaved who we are instead of telling them who we were. Don't mm. get that? Yes. You know, we got saved and we got cleaned up, so now we want to talk about how you need to tell your story. You can tell some, some, some people who are unsaved how God brought you out, how God brought you through. We want to tell them about who, who we are instead of who we were and what, what we were and would still be without life, the life-changing power of God. That's what we need to tell them about, what God did for me. And if you were alive, he did something for you. Amen. 
Your life is your witness. Your life, my brothers and sisters, is your witness to the power of God. You see, the unsaved want some hope. They want to know that they have a chance. Mm -hmm. Some of them may not. But a lot of the unsaved, they want some hope. They want to believe that they got a chance. But if we never tell them, we never speak out, we never show up, guess what? They may never know. They need to know that no matter how bad they have been, it cannot outweigh how good God can be. Amen. Are y'all here? It is when we witness about our past and, and they see our present that they have hope for their future. Somebody, sometimes you just need to tell your story. Okay. You tell your testimony, not a test of that. Mm. I'm talking about you went down to the shoe store and you bought some shoes and took them home and it was, it was too, too tight and you brought them back and they changed and that's a test. That ain't no testimony, that's a store policy. <laughs> It's supposed to exchange them. If you borrow from the store, a testimony is a you go to a test and you know it was God who brought you out. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we must stop trying to act and talk like we come out of our mother's womb holy and sanctified. David reminds us, Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So it's time to be a true witness. Tell somebody how good God has been. Tell somebody how far he has brought you. Tell somebody that God has never left you. Tell somebody, tell somebody that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Tell somebody about his grace and his mercy. Tell your children. Tell your co-workers. Tell a sister girl. Tell a homeboy. Tell them that lying and cheating will get them nowhere. Mm -hmm. I know because I've been there and done that. That's what you know. Lying and cheating, crooked, and what you trying to do, it ain't gonna get you nowhere. I've been there. I tried that. I tried crooked. It got me in more trouble than it got me anything. Right. Tell somebody, I'm trying to be smarter than the system, and it didn't work. Listen, Paul says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, we all have sinned right. and come short of the glory of God. So you can tell them now, it was not you, which is smart itself. It was not you, but God's grace and power that brought you out, and it can bring them out too. Amen. That's the message we got to be sharing. The question is, probably still being asked, is where do I go to witness? Well, Jesus told us. He told us generally, and he told us specifically where to witness. We've talked about that through the series of men. Generally, he told us to go to the highways and hedges. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. He told us to go into the vineyard and work. And whatever is right, I will give you. Isn't it strange that people will work 40, 50, 60 hours a week in their job. They don't want to give God two hours a week. Isn't that strange? Specifically, Jesus says, well, the Word of God says, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but ye shall receive 
That's what Jesus illustrated. He illustrated his power. He spoke to them, but he also showed them. He spoke to them about his power, but he also showed them his power. That's why I said earlier that the church has lost its power because we, we ain't seeing nobody testify that the power of God moved in their lives and healed them from a terminal disease. We don't see much of that. Do we? Well, we, the same power that Jesus was talking about in the New Testament over 2,000 years ago is the same power that we have now. God didn't change his power. His power didn't get weaker because we got weaker. His power is the same. We got to make sure that we operate under his power. Yeah. Acts 1 and 28. First of all, it says, but ye shall receive power. I want to focus on the last words Jesus laid down before he went up. First, Jesus says, let's go to Acts. And he said unto them, verse 8, but ye shall receive power, but ye, notice that ye don't have nobody name on it, right? Ye doesn't have a name on it, so you can put your name on it. You can say, but I, or put your name there, whatever it is, Joe, Johnny, Michelle, whoever, shall, but ye, but I shall receive power. Here Jesus was talking to every believer, and at the same time talking to each believer. You get that? He said, but you, fellow translation, shall receive power. If you're a believer, put your name there. I shall receive power. But Jack shall receive power. Next, Jesus said, he said, first, but ye. Then he says, shall receive. Jesus said, we need something, and he is going to give it to us. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. Jesus realized that in order to do what he has commanded us to do, that we need the power. His power. Mm -hmm. His power. Remember when he went behind the closed doors where the disciples were running scared? He gave them peace, but he also gave them power. In Acts, he gave them power again. Before he goes back to his father, he gave them power. He shall, shall receive power. Mm -hmm. He knew what we need, so he's given us what we need. My brothers and my sisters, God always provides what we need. Amen. You don't have to worry about being without in your witness. If you don't have to worry about being without at all, if you are trusting God and you got faith that God will do what he said. Yeah. And you got to begin to speak it out of your mouth. If you say nothing, then you get nothing. Remember, Jesus spoke out when he also showed up. Or he showed up when he also spoke out. So we got to understand that if we want to make a difference in our communities, in our families, in our churches, that we got to show up and we got to speak out. That's hard to get both to even show up these days. So Lord, no, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna speak out because they ain't showing up. They ain't showing up even to get what God is saying to them. Collectively. Because they're here and there and everywhere. Here and little thing. Now do you not know that this thing is personal? Every little thing happens, even when you run here and there. But this thing is personal. I don't care how much you may love your spouse, how much you love your mama or your daddy, this relationship with Jesus the Christ is personal. It's what you do. I love my spouse, but I can't, I, I can't, I can't get another one. She can't get mine. He's going to pay me according to my name. 
label as my love, not because of somebody else. And we got it twisted because anything ain't happening, here we go. But well, what are you supposed to be doing? Are you moving just because somebody else moved? Did God tell you to move? Well, you know, ah, ah, ah. yeah. When you start studying like that, you start to laugh. <laughs> As much as we love our family, we sometimes have to go a different direction from our family. Don't say that. You can just say, ouch. We love them, yeah, but do they come before God? No. I'm just asking. Or do you think they come before God? No. Well, why do we put them before God? We got this going on. We got that going on. Where we can get our responsibility. Where we have the crowd going. Yeah. <laughs> that is not biblical. But this thing is personal. When you get before the judgment seat of Christ, when we will be judged for our work, not for our sins, thank God. Amen. Be judged for our work. It's going to be about you. Mm. When you say, well, you know, Lord, you know my husband. No. There ain't gonna be no husbands in here. <laughs> it's what you did. It's gonna determine your reward. Amen. That's why the scripture tells us in the in the, he's gonna pay every man, every person, every human according to his work. Not according to their work. Jesus says, we need something, so we give it to us. We know we need the power. We're going to witness. We're going to be sold because he knew we need power. So Jesus said, shall we see, the next word he says, power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, some people may read that wrong, that they're going to get the power to work. But no. That may be in that sentence like that, but it said that you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. You see, my brothers and my sisters, witnessing with power only comes after the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Okay. That's why we ain't good at it. We're not good at it because we have pushed the Holy Ghost aside. Mm. The Holy Ghost that you don't know. I know what I've been through. You don't know what I've gone through. Yeah, you do know what you've been through. And he will not be telling you or commanding you to do something that you can't do. That's right. Through his power. So when we make all these excuses, you know, nowadays we got all kinds. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't come to church. Why? Well, you know, I, you know, I, I can't be there all the time. Yeah, but Monday morning you're running over for <laughs> Trying to get it work. I can't do this, I can't do that. Well, you know the baby crying. Or oh, some other. Come on now. My mama had babies. We shut up when we was in church. <laughs> if we didn't shut up, we know what we were going to get. All these excuses for not doing what God has commanded us to do. Was carried at Calvary and Jesus died for all our excuses. So if he says that we can do this through his power, then we can do it. We just got to make sure that we want to do it. Right. It always, you got to have a want to. That's in anything. Mm -hmm. in business, in, in, in whatever you're doing, you got to want to do it. Jesus the Christ knew that we need the power. You can just go out and proclaim the good news. You can. But your proclamation will be without power. You need to go out after you have the power. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? You want to start talking to somebody about soul winning, they're going to beat your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the 
because we got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was going to keep you. The Holy Ghost was going to show you where to go and what to say. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, you've been in church for two or three years. You should know the plan of salvation. You should know how to lead somebody to Christ. Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses unto me. That's what he said. You shall be my witnesses unto me. Not witness for somebody else. We go to a good restaurant. We do wish. We call our friends. What time do you need to go? We go to a nice hotel. Oh, child, they tell you when I say you need to we go to any of the, the places that we normally go. We go to the movies, watch a good movie. That's how you need to go. So we're witnessing. We witness at weddings. We witness celebration with anniversaries and all of that. But what about witnessing for Christ? Can you tell somebody that Christ is a good movie? I'll tell you that he's better than a movie. Can we, we, we spend all of this time on Facebook and Twitter and all the social media outlets and talk about all these other things but the one who woke you up this morning. Amen. Right. One who gave you life, the one who's keeping you, the one who's shielding you, the one who's protecting you, the one who's providing for you, the one who's empowering you. Don't you believe that sooner or later God will get fed up with this foolishness? But if you don't believe it, go back and read the Bible. Israel was the chosen people. He got better with them. Mm -hmm. How many times do you think Israel would end up in bondage because they didn't do what God said? If he let us get by with it, and I believe you would have to apologize to Israel. He's not going to let us get by. And we wonder why are all these things going on in our world. Well, it may be in Texas. But God is a God of love. He won't do that. No, God is not doing it. He's allowing that to happen because you have disobeyed him. Mm -hmm. You're doing your own thing. You're doing what you want to do. So, so, so you walked away from him. Not he walked away from you. We should have no problem telling the lost and the unsaved what we have seen and what we have done. Somebody has seen Jesus open doors that was shut in the face. Somebody has seen Jesus bless you in a mess. Somebody has seen Jesus make ways out of no way. Somebody has heard that he's a still small voice. Yes. Somebody has heard that whosoever will let them come. You see, some of us, some of us have been a witness to other things, but we fail to be a witness. We've been witness for a car accident. We've been witness for home invasion. We've been a witness for babies being born. We've been witness to children being, our children graduating. We've been witness to all of that. But are you a witness for Christ? How many times do you mention Christ? I'm not going to say a day, but it'll be. Like Elder was saying this morning, is, is that you should be saying something about Jesus every day. Mm -hmm. If you don't say it to somebody, because somebody may not do it on somebody or anybody, you should be saying it to him. You should be thanking him and saying something good about him if you don't say anything good to somebody else about him. We witness all these other things that we spend. 
spend money, and we spend time, and we spend talent, and we, we even spend our temple, our bodies, and put our bodies on the line to get to a marriage. And you don't know how long it's going to last. But you get to Jesus, you last, and it's my mom will say from now on. Jesus the Christ wants us to be a witness. Why am I preaching this series of messages? Number one is a need. Number two, we need sometimes to be reminded. And most of all, it is God's command. Amen. For all of us. None of us are exempt. Yes. Brothers and sisters, Jesus wants us to be a witness. So when he went up, he set the power on back down. When the Holy Spirit got in the disciples, when the Holy Spirit got in them, the disciples went out. That's what Mark chapter 16 says. But saints, you will never, ever, never have the power of the will to witness until you are indwelt with the Spirit of God. The indwelling of the Spirit of God is the key to the outgoing. The indwelling is the key to the outgoing. And you can try to fake it if you want. There's a whole lot of folks trying to fake it. You know, they talk a good talk. But you can't watch the talk. You can't just listen to just the talk. You have to watch the walk. Mm -hmm. You watch the live. Because a lot of people talk a good game. They talk that they know it so much for God. And then when a little stone comes, they succumb. Mm -hmm. But where's your faith now? Mm -hmm. Listen. It is the method of the master to make sure that we possess the Holy Spirit and use it to show up and to speak out. Right. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4 for a moment. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And this is what Jesus says to us. We've got to pay attention to what Jesus says. What Paul says is good, and what Jesus says is good. And Jesus, verse 14, chapter 4, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Here it is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to share the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind, Set at liberty them that are ruined. So guess what? Remember I said earlier, Jesus said, greater works shall we do? We should be doing some of the same things that Jesus did because he has given us that power. Now it's up to us to make sure that we show up and speak out with that power. And it's up to the ones who need the power to receive it. But they can't receive it if we don't get it. So it's so important to us that we speak life into people's lives. Try to witness without the Holy Spirit. Spirit is like laying, it's like trying to start your car without a battery. Turn on your lamp without plugging it into the side. We need the Holy Ghost. That's why the church is powerless, because it's the Holy Ghost. We are pushing the Holy Ghost aside.
side, because the Holy Ghost trying to tell us to do so, we tell him what? Are we telling them we ain't going to do it? Or we don't want to do it? That don't make sense. We've got to the point now that there are a lot of people just tell you up front, I don't believe it. Hmm. But just let something happen. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. It is the Holy Ghost who tells us where to go, who to talk to, when to speak, what to say. My brothers and my sisters witnessing and their soul winnings without Christ, without the triune God, is futile. It is useless. It is vain to try to witness without the Holy Ghost. All right. I would dare say it's crazy to try to do that. Jesus proclaimed he was the way. He is the way. In every way. He taught how to be an effective witness. It must always be a mixture of word and works. It always should be a witness or be a mixture of showing up and speaking out. Always. Jesus had, if you will, a show and tell witness. He had a method of soul winning. He told them on one occasion that I am the bread of life. That's what he told them. But he showed them by taking two fish, five body loaves of bread, fell and fed a multitude. He told them, I am the light of the world. But he showed them by opening the blind eyes. Yes. He told them, and I am the resurrection and the life. Then he raised Lazarus from the dead. All right. My brothers and sisters, Jesus the Christ has given us. He has given us so many formulas. His power plus his word plus works. We're going to miss the last one for sure. Because not only are we lazy from a physical standpoint, we're lazy spiritually. To win the loss, we must tell them, but also. Show them. Tell them that he's a doctor. Show them by visiting and laying hands on the sick. Tell them he's a deliverer. Show them by getting involved in deliverance. Brothers and my sisters, I believe that it's a time for change in the way we witness. The methods change. Most of the time in this present age, we're not going to do much knocking on doors. But there's still a way to get the message to the unsaved. We got all kinds of technology that we can use for the kingdom of God. So it's time for change that we witness. For too long, the world has heard his word. Time for change. Too long we have heard his words but not seen our works. It is time we use his words and back them up with our works. It is time to witness by helping the hurting, by feeding the hungry, by visiting the sick, by ministering to the midfits. We as children of God, we as the church. We need to show the world we know how to love, to have compassion, to forgive, to show mercy. I 
I believe that the world is tired of our good talk. The world, the world is tired of our good talk. They need to see our good walk. Are you going to hear me? The world is tired of our good words. It needs to see our good works. So let us remember this individual. You, you can't make nobody else do nothing anyway. Because I close it out to you, you can't make them do anything. You have to make yourself better. Because again, when you face God in the judgment, you're going to have to face it for yourself. They used to sing a song when I was a child in the old church. You got to stand before King Jesus. You got to stand there by yourself. Nobody else going to stand there for you. You got to stand there by yourself. That's a true song. Now, of course, the old folks didn't just made it up, but it's, 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 it's scripture. scripture. Scripture backs it up. You got to stand by yourself. You can't take it off with you. You can't take the children with you. You got to stand before Christ. You got to stand before the judgment seat by yourself. Let us show and tell. Let us show up and speak out. And tell them and show them that we feel the same way Jesus felt. You know who he felt about us? He felt so good about us and he loved us so that he died. Nobody else did that for us. So do you think that he might want us to be saved? Yeah, he died for us. As much as you want your family, your, your spouse, your children saved, you don't want them saved no more than Jesus did. Because he died for them. All of us. We have love and compassion. That's what the world needs. We got to be like Jesus. We got to feel what Jesus felt. We got to show up and speak out. That's the game. That is the game. That's the method Evangelizing and soul winning. We got to show up. And we got to speak out. No longer can we be quiet. And the old folks used to say, the world is going to hell in a handbag. <laughs> Can't you see the sign? Do you think that 2021 is better than 2011, 10 years ago? Or 2023 is better than 2013? Do you think it's better? Or do you think they've got worse? Got worse, right? Guess what? The world is not going to get any better. Well, see, we're in the world, but we're not of the world so God can keep us in the midst of all of this chaos. Yes. If we keep our minds, our hearts, our spirits stayed on him. Amen. But we got to understand one of the most important things to do is to make sure that we obey what he says. Yes. That's what gets us the best obedience according to the word of God is better than sacrifice. And we know sacrifice is up there. Close to the but the word of God says obedience is better than sacrifice. We can't afford. Because if there's somebody else go down, we can be not go anytime. Amen. We can get a phone call anytime and somebody said, well, you know, your, your, your daughter, your granddaughter, your cousin, your auntie was at the shopping mall and somebody walked in there and said, That's why we need Jesus. 
We need the triune God that He can protect us 24 yes. 7. And if we are casualties or shooting, that means that we're going to a better place. Amen. But he can protect us right here. He can give us abundant life. He already promised us what's going to happen in heaven. Our inheritance in heaven. But he also promised us that we can live abundant life right here. Amen. So we have to, we're going to focus on Christ and we're going to focus on all the chaotic things that cause in us financial issues, and family issues, and friendship issues. And even fellowship issues. We wonder why, you know, why I can't, why I can't get it together. Well, I can tell you why. Because you trying, and I said you, I'm not talking about anybody individual. Most church folk are trying to straddle things. Mm -hmm. They think that you can do that physically. Mm -hmm. You can get on any kind of fence and straddle it. But you can't straddle the fence when it comes down to God. Mm -hmm. nope. You either obey Him or you disobey. You either obey him in some area of your life or you disobey him in some area of your life. You can't straddle a fence. And you straddle a fence, you're in more trouble anyway. So God is going to chastise you. And you straddle a fence, guess what? The devil is going to be on your case as well. Because you got you got one side on, on, on God and the other side on the devil. So now you're going to have some, 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 some issues from both sides. Yeah. But you can't do it anyway. You either believe God or you don't believe Him. Amen. You either trust Him or you don't. You either obey Him or you don't. And you know what? I've gotten to the point in my life is that I'm not worried about folks who don't want to obey God. I'm concerned. But I ain't worried about them because it always comes down to a choice. And if you choose to do the wrong things and not obey God, that's going to be you. Even if I choose, if you choose, I'm not going to help you sometimes, but if you just choose to go the wrong way, you some of the stuff you got to figure out yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I can't, I, can't be, I can't keep putting my effort, my time, my talent, my treasure into empty pockets, or pockets of holes in. Right. I'm sorry to your life and you ain't trying to do nothing for your own life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do that. Yeah. Sometimes we do that because we love our children, but sometimes you have to cut them off. Right. You got to let them feel the, the, the pain, yeah, right. feel uh, the need to have some. Because guess what? You know, why we're talking about this the other day. We try to prepare our children because one day we ain't going to be here. Right. Now, what you going to do when I'm gone? We ain't gonna be here all the time. More than likely, we you gonna outlive me. More than likely. Yeah. So we're trying to prepare them to make sure that you you self-sufficient in a sense, but depending on God, I pray every day that my children will understand their responsibility to God and understand their responsibility to their fellow man. Right. And do unto others that you will have others to do unto you. Now, I can pray all of that, but they decide that they want to do something else. It ain't tied to my hand. That's right. right. So we, as the church, got to show up. We got to put your hands together and give up. Showing up where we're supposed to be speaking out when we need to. But we realize there's so many in Christian don't have turn their backs on you for whatever reason. Many think they have plenty of time to get their lives together. But we know that you didn't promise everybody a long time. We know that there are some long graves in the cemetery, there's some short graves, there's some medium-sized graves. 
Don't, man don't die by age. Man die by time. We pray for those who may be slipping and sliding. Plan on your relationship to you because they will come back to God who knows them in spite of them. And be instrumental in doing the things that you have told us and called us to do, commissioned for us to do. So that you will get all of the glory. But then on top of that, we will be blessed and blessed abundantly. Let this word today sink into our hearts, minds, sink deep into our hearts, minds, and spirits. And that we'll just not be hearers, but we'll be doers. Yeah. That we will put ourselves in proper places so that you, you can use us for kingdom good. We give you all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise for in Jesus' name that we pray. So I say amen. Amen. I love you. I love you.